Welcome to the Sandersonian Institute of Cosmere Studies, where there's always another secret. Guys, we have made it. This Yay! is the episode where we become current. Welcome, everybody, to another episode of the Sandersonian Institute of Cosmere Studies, episode 43. And tonight, it is October 28th, 2019. We are here. After tonight, we will have covered all of Brandon's currently published Cosmere works. With the exception of 11th Metal and... Uh, uh, Elementor Jack, but we're saving we those. Haven't, we haven't covered everything. We haven't specifically <laughs> covered those, but we have sort of included yeah. points of each of them in other discussions. So we're saving I'm counting them those. For a week, we need them. <laughs> Jordan, you're going rogue. I always go rogue, except when no, I'm you rogues. don't. Rogues are so fun. I love like, playing rogues. No, anyway. So seriously, though, we have we're. It, after tonight, we have covered all the major Cosmere works. And yes, that does include Alamancer Jack and the 11th Medal. We have talked about those as part of other discussions. So stop trying to mess things up, Jordan. <laughs> Knock it off. Or I'll raise your rent again. Anyway, I am Bill, and I am joined, as always, by my completionist co-host, Amy and Jordan. Proving that to be more true than I realized, apparently, in Jordan's case tonight. <laughs> So for those of you who do who listen to the podcast recordings or watch the videos after the fact, we do want to remind you, you can join in and interact with us live via chat as we record each episode at www.twitch.tv slash innkeepers table. We do our recordings every other Monday night starting at 7.30 p.m. Pacific time, 10.30 p.m. Eastern. Join in, take part in the discussion, and, you know, don't enable Jordan in the chat because... Uh, he's impossible to live with it as, as it is. <laughs> anyway, so thanks for that. Uh, how are y'all doing? I got my hair cut. I got enabled. You did. And, and Jordan noticed and Bill noticed. It was amazing. I noticed when Jordan said something <laughs> about it. Yeah. So I cut off nine inches for you lovely people who can't see me. But yeah. So now it's I have boingy curls in it right now because they curled it for me. It was great. Awesome. The audio quality of her hair has definitely improved with it's the boing. It's so awesome. I boing. can hear it. I can, <laughs> maybe I should see a doctor about that. Anyway, the Sandersonian Institute of Cosmere Studies is made possible by the support of our listeners and patrons. The show, of course, will continue to be free. But if you do want to help us out, keep the show going, keep it, help it to improve, then head on over to patreon.com slash Cosmere Studies. Even just pledging a couple dollars per episode will really, really help us out. And because we, we want to keep making the show better, keep it going, hopefully do it more frequent, th frequently. I can speak, I promise. See, that's one of the things we could improve. I could afford to get speech lessons. <laughs> but anyway, I, by, doing, by joining and becoming a patron, you will get immediate access to our Discord channel. We've got a great group over there. We throw out a lot of crazy aluminum foil hat theories we have some really cool serious discussions and just there's a lot of great folks over there so mm -hmm. uh yeah just come and join us um as part of joining and becoming a patron you also will get early access to bonus episodes exclusive access to other bonus content and even automatic entry into some of our giveaways now this week we want to specifically thank our newest patron his name is and don't think that it because it's going to cut off before you expect it to his name is john c mm -hmm. not john cena john c. <laughs> but john c so thank you john and to all of our other patrons as well y'all are amazing we i really really, really it. want to believe it's john cena because <laughs> i just want i want to imagine him with just like only paperbacks like he doesn't get the full things and he has those giant hands and he's sitting there <laughs> <laughs> only the trade paperbacks yeah mm -hmm. i love it I love it. Uh, well, thanks for being here, guys, for mm -hmm. our final episode. No, just kidding. It's not our <laughs> final episode. <laughs> well, we peaked. We got the following of John Cena. It's just all down. <laughs> We're good. 
guys, we still need Dwayne J. So, <laughs> so anyway, guys, tonight we are actually kind of current with pieces that have come out because mm-hmm. White Sand Volume 3 was just released. Like, a couple weeks ago. Well, not a couple. Was it? I can't recently. believe it actually happened. Well, the paper, the the paper, ver- the hard virtual, yes, the, the non the dead tree version, version is Howard Taylor says. Yes, dead trees. Yes, it is a. When did it's it say wonderful. That? First it time he's released a Cosmere book while we've been uh... since since we started the podcast. I yeah, know, yeah. So this is exciting. Mm-hmm. Although it's still weird because it's a graphic <laughs> novel, but. Oh, apparently chat's freaking out because of the joke I made. I'm sorry we're not <laughs> stopping the podcast, but we appreciate you caring. Unless John Cena breaks down a door and makes us. No. If he's a fan and he's a patron, he wants us to keep going, Jordan. <laughs> Look, I don't know what the direction this is going. It's John Cena. Anything's possible in the world of wrestling. <laughs> wow. All right. So uh, maybe we should talk about the book. <laughs> what yes. do you think? Yeah, that sounds good. Uh, so all right. Can, so- can, I, can I do this part, Bill? Okay. Previously in White Sand. White Sand through the hourglass. These are Taldane of our lives. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> you wrote it and I was like, oh, oh, we've got to try and imitate it. I don't actually was, watch soap operas it was normally. Absolutely but... horrible, but I, uh, <laughs> I couldn't help but put it in the show notes. It was fun. Uh, so now that you've started off, where, where are we? What has been going on? Um... Poor Kenton has every person going no and slamming a door in his face, metaphorically. I feel like he's already I'm trying to kill him. The artisan, hasn't he? Oh, I get. Did he? He got a couple. He also he got, got the artisan. He got Eric's and he got the father. admiral. Did he get Eric's father? Or? Yeah, because no. he, didn't no. he go out into he the said, sands and like save? He him? went out into the sand, and I think he said but no. He said no. Still, it's oh. it's in this one that he gets that vote. Yeah. Because of reasons that we will get to. Because of bad things. Of course, before we go into that, remember, there are spoilers in this show. And Mm -hmm. while this show is specifically discussing White Sand, those spoilers could go off into other parts of the Cosmere. You've been warned. All right. Um, And if you even want to talk about that part, we can go ahead and talk about well, Eric's Well, I mean, father. we could, but I mean, I'm just, I mean, the first thing you have in the notes is different, well, but I mean, it's... remember, the, the show notes yeah. are just there as a reference. Know, We're not going I through just, everything. I like to follow the list. I have my list, and I want to do it for the list. But we can talk Did about that. Did you have that. to say it like it was a threat? <laughs> I have to follow the list. Follow the list. No. Jordan, that's... I'm afraid. Lock the doors. <laughs> you're closer. No. I have to go no, upstairs, and that sounds impossible. I have to go downstairs and then come back upstairs and I'll be out of breath and oh, nobody that wants to hear that. Anyway. Possible. So anyway, well, okay. I, I don't know. So, so I mean, yes. she, Everybody's... He, gets that, he gets that vote because Aaron's, Eric's father dies. And Eric a... goes to dark places. Yeah, he went. He was in a dark place a little before that, but then he goes really not. He goes happy. crazy dark. His speech mm-hmm. about basically how responsibility kills people. Yeah, mm-hmm. he's like a steals their soul and stuff. Yeah, it was a very interesting speech. Well, in this, yeah, and in this book, it's kind of like a switch flips. And yeah. it's like something breaks inside of him. Mm-hmm. Like he wouldn't touch a sword before, and now he's killing. Lots and of I think we know it. now why he won't touch a sword. What was mm-hmm. the word that said he's like a cold blooded predator? Yeah, I think it was and like so, that effect. Uh, but. At this point, at the, we, we had a uh, cliffhanger at the end where Chris comes mm-hmm. in and she's like, I want to join the football team. And I'm a girl. I mean, I want to learn sand mastery. <laughs> and I'm a dark sider. Yeah. And she's and not even saying it. And she's not even saying it in the language that everybody else there understands. She's not speaking in Los, Losandian. Losandian? Right. L- Losandian. Losandian. Okay. Yeah. And then I love how he's just like, okay. Well, it's like <laughs> you, you can tell that she's got this. He's going to push back. How I'm, ridiculous. We'll never she, let a dark so dark yeah. join. He's like, okay. It's just, wait, she's like, wait, but really? I, 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 had, I had my list of, of counter arguments <laughs> and you just, you just wiped all that work out. So I don't have to do that. Oh, uh, it's, but yeah. And, and Kenton's response is basically, we've got to change. Things are not so, going yeah. well for the DM. We have to change. 
we'll start with we'll start with me and we'll start with opening up the dm so Mm -hmm. let's get you tested yeah Mm -hmm. well like on top of that now like families can live in there and Mm -hmm. yeah he he, it's not like official official because i think that's that's at the end of the that's book. That's one of the fir- last it, things that he does at the very end of the book. He makes it yeah. super official, but he doesn't ban them from having them at the building at this point right. or something to that effect. Basically, he's he's trying to keep them from being so secluded and mm-hmm. reclusive and other words that have clue in it somewhere. Secluded, reclusive. All good. I yeah. can't think of another. Pro- pro- yeah. yeah. He's trying to if, he's if, trying to preclude some of the the problems that people There are going you go. To... Good job. <laughs> Yay. Uh, <laughs> um now it's really interesting uh the way things go when uh he ends up actually testing her. You know, there's mm-hmm. they they get to sort of a some actual free time and he's like, "Well, you know, may, we may as well start." And you know, she <laughs> it's funny she gets her pad and paper and Kitten's just like, well, no, this this isn't a written test. She's you, like, you don't I, need that. <laughs> I want to take notes on everything. And boy, okay, over the yeah. course of the Cosmere, she takes notes on everything. everything. Well, just like you don't, you don't <laughs> learn. You you feel it, and I'm just like, eh, you don't know Chris yet. <laughs> to the point where uh, where Brandon has actually said that Chris probably knows more about the Cosmere than even Hoyd. Um, mainly because she's actually made a point of scholarship and study of it, and he's just sort of. All right, here's what I got to do. This is yeah, my task. Yeah, I mean, especially since in, in other books, he's said that he just kind of goes where he knows he's supposed to go. He doesn't always know why. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and so... Which I but, can't see because, Chris doing. But, well, in, because again, she's a scholar. She wants to just learn things. I want to mm-hmm. see a conversation between Chris and Shalon and Yasna. Holy cow, <laughs> I just had that thought. That would be fun. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. But, you know, she tries to master sand... Basically, he puts the sand. He's like, "Goes all. You got to feel it. Be the leaf, you know." And just Mm -hmm. and the sand sand penetrates us. It binds the planet together. It gets everywhere. Oh no! I hate it. (laughs) I was wondering if it was going to go there. Jordan, you're going (laughs) to you're going to drive me to drink. Anyway, so anyway, yeah, so it doesn't work. She can't do it. But I love that her reaction is like, "Huh." Okay. Okay. It's just like, like, so they're sort of surprising each other back and forth. Yeah. Just I like, mean, you, for, for him, he grew up wanting to be a Sandmaster because his dad mm-hmm. was one and it was just, and, and then he was a really sad, poor level of skill, you know, up until recently where he finally has three mm-hmm. ribbons, I think it is. And, and so like the idea of not being able to do it probably would, mm-hmm. would have crushed him versus her. She wasn't expecting it. So she was very, she was approaching it completely as a scholar and as mm-hmm. a, uh, strategist almost because what she, she's not necessarily saying i need to make you know be able to master sand but i want to know how to test people mm-hmm. to see how the, you know so that i can test people on dark side and see if they can master sand and mm-hmm. well and i um, like his point where it's like maybe but that might be kind of pointless since you can't recharge the sand on dark side yeah. And she's just like, watch me. <laughs> just you watch. I'll make it happen. I'm going to science the crap out of this. <laughs> she totally does say like the, things like that several times, but not in those exact words. Right. <laughs> it's like, they're like, oh, you don't have bullets anymore. And she's like, but we have science. <laughs> uh, I love Chris. And I, the other thing I loved in that, that scene was like, they're going down the hallway. And I think mm-hmm. this is the mom and me. That's totally just understanding uh-huh. and feeling it so well is that he's like he goes like five steps and they're like someone comes and asks him about this and he's like well uh, okay yeah that and then he goes 10 you know goes a little further and then it's like <laughs> another request and another request and, another, and she's finally like you got to delegate you can't you can't do all of this and i'm like that is my day every day <laughs> where it's like i'm trying to do something and then i get sidetracked and sidetracked and sidetracked and sidetracked and sidetracked and it just yeah yeah i love she she says she says to him you need an assistant he says i need 10 assistants 10 assistants <laughs> And he gets two. He, gets, he ends he up has, getting two. He gets yeah. Darren and Eloran. The thing yeah. that's interesting is it was because he was never supposed to be in any form of leadership. He has no leadership training. He was right. always the rebel without a cause. And so but Brandon's really big on the bureaucratic character that's supposed to handle things. Oh, yes. Mm-hmm. We've we've seen several of those throughout his books and the bookkeepers, yeah. It's just I I wonder if the whole reason for that is because because you notice like Elantris doesn't tend to doesn't have that character really. 
No, but it kind of goes into the 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 upkeep, the guy who like cleans everything and it's yeah. just like keeps but, things in order. But given it's just one of these things I wonder if after doing the first book where he actually had people like that if he started appreciating that role a little mm-hmm. bit more and why it shows up in so many of his books. Maybe it's a tribute to to Peter Alstra. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so this is slightly off topic but it just came to mind but um I could have sworn it was an article or something online that I read and it talked about how women writers versus men writers and how a lot of men from like the classical, you know, like a hundred years ago or whatever. Mm-hmm. And they, like, how they would talk about how they, they were able to write these great things, but then they didn't have to do any housework and their wives waited on them and did all this stuff for them. And so like they could solely focus on that. And mm-hmm. there were all these women that were trying to do same level of work, but they had to do everything else too. And huh. so, their ability to to go ahead and do all of those things was severely hindered because you got to feed the kids, you got to clean the house, you got to do this. And so Absolutely. They, which, you can't which focus led... and have that creative energy. And so if you have someone who can manage all the little things for you, you can do a lot more work mm-hmm. and do which a lot better work. Which is what led to the, the false belief that, you know, oh, this is the sort of work that women can't do. Mm-hmm. because Oh, they just can't handle they're... it. Their brains can't handle it. And, and yeah. like the and word hysterical like, no, they is, just have no time to... Because mm-hmm. we're, my... we're doing everything you don't think about. Mm-hmm. Yeah. My favorite one that was talked about writing excuses was how for a long time it was assumed that women couldn't handle red wine. But mm-hmm. but uh, huh. can't, what's her, what's Dan, the 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 main Dan Wells? No, the, the main what main female person on Oh Mary Mary you, Mary Robin oh. at Cowell. She's, oh. she's just like she's like, and I go back and I think to all those Regency dresses that were primarily white. I remember that, and she's oh. and she's just like is it, like the men might have offered them red wine, and the women probably like, oh no, I can't handle it. You know, to be polite. Uh-huh. Yeah. But it's really it's like, I don't ha- want to get this out of my dress. <laughs> yeah, and it's just, and I'm just, she's just laughing. It's like, so men got this impression of, oh, this must be because they just can't handle it or something. Cause, Clearly. Because they just believed well, them. They didn't think of the next level. Mm-hmm. Which, they don't quick do the laundry. Look o- which, quick look over to, to Stormlight, that's where the basis of a lot of these Vorin traditions as well. Yep. Mm-hmm. Um, and how, just, yeah, it was just these traditions that grow out of assumptions from one or two people who then pass them to others. And suddenly that's the way things are. Yeah. I, I, so. I do like the, the, how I think it's Hoyd makes a comment about how women's work is all like the nice, easy, you don't have to go out and kill people type work. And then, and then there's also where Dalinar found out about how, why he had to tie it three times mm-hmm. versus two times. And it was because somebody was shorter, like a couple yeah. Masters and the fact that, that Adolin like, knocks like a girl because it was with one hand. <laughs> right. <laughs> was so, Shalon oh, accused him of knocking like a woman because it was one-handed because that was when he walked in on her. Right. Oh, oh yeah. And he's yeah, like, okay. who knocks with two hands? Yeah, anyway, <laughs> back to Taldane. <laughs> Sorry. Psych. No worries. I, I was part of that, so. Yeah. Um, um, you're at best indirectly culpable. <laughs> anyway, so we were, so we talked about how he needs Kristen an assistant to delegate. I just I liked yeah. Chris, who she has that training. She's mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. she understands how important it is for him to be able to focus on the grander plan. Yeah, she right. administrates and and assists and does all of that. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I just sort of love that. And can we kind of take a a quick peek towards the the epilogue because I think it has something to do with that. Sure. So you know, Chris tests and she can't. Um, mm-hmm. Master Sand. And then in the epilogue of the story where they're all on the boat oh. and they're heading back and she's just like, okay, well, you know, she they, they can't take barrels of sand back with mm-hmm. them. And I think that's, you know, cool because they need to test. And so they just and they take have, a lot. they have somebody who's a sand master with them as well. I don't remember his name, but he's there to, to kind of oversee it. Did Darren go with them? I don't know. I have a hardest time in, in, with these books with the names. Just because you don't see them as much as you would in print. And mm-hmm. I don't know. I just have the hardest time with it. And it, it doesn't help that, like, this book was so much better than the previous two. Oh, it's so much easier to, to the pictures are so much clearer. But it's still oh, yeah. still so many names. And, like, I just is Darren the rest of the guys? Things. I don't know. Redhead, it's redhead is, it's a redhead. 
at the okay. end, but I can't Thanks. remember. Anyway, I cannot I, remember. Sorry. I think that's Apologies. Yeah. But no, it's, it's okay. so much clearer what's going on, and it's, it's truly a graphic novel. The previous ones read more like comic books, which were heavy on action and lines, but less on dialogue. This, but one, they were... this one lets full speeches happen that are very much something Brandon would do. But it's it's not even just more like I feel like it's still more deftly done as well. Um, yeah. Like even for a comic book, the others were still a bit disjointed. This was a lot more coherent. Mm-hmm. And I appreciated that. I wonder how much of that led to the delay. That's very honestly. We were supposed, I be... Weren't we supposed to get this in like June? I thought it was August or something. It, it was could July. Have been June. Oh, was it was it July? July. Okay, mm-hmm. in between. But the thing is, it was. It's also been a long time since book two came out, and yeah. I think that's what led to that delay. Um, but anyway, so she decides. Let's go ahead and start testing people. We'll start with Bayon, and. Oh. She pours the sand into Bayon's hand and explains what he needs to do. And then suddenly we just get this zoomed out shot with this like just almost atomic force explosion. And she gets this look on her face just like, what? Okay. Are you you okay? Merely surprised. Merely surprised. (laughs) Why? Because Bayon is the king of understatement. Mm -hmm. It's like, this is this thing. What? She has okay. no clue what's going on with any of her assistants, it turns out. I know. It's poor woman. She's, I mean, she has one of them who's like a double agent, Bayon, right? Because he's working for. Uh-huh. I can't remember. Well, there's the two who are double agents. Yeah. yeah. Well, oh, ba- Bayon, Bayon was. was... More, Bayon was, was a single agent, but he had a different mission from the others. So he knew the mm-hmm. others had a different mission. Well, no, and, but he was a double agent. But he. Because he was, because he was working he, for her, but he was also working for the government to yeah. try and. Kill. He had two. He had two employers. Yeah, and yeah. He, he was insistent on keeping both contracts. Mm-hmm. Well, and he, and I just like how when she assumed he was a traitor to her cause, he just completely agreed with it, so that it would put her, put him in a better position mm-hmm. against the other two. And, Mm-hmm. I gotta be honest. When he started explaining that, I was just like, "What?" Because I didn't remember what really had happened. Again, it was a bit disjointed. <laughs> yeah, so it's a bit disjointed. And so, so, some of the like, I will say, like, I think some of these were good plot twists, but because of the disjointed nature, they lost some of their kick. Like, mm-hmm. obviously, we're jumping around. Elleran at the end, his his betrayal. Like, uh, mm-hmm. Bill and I had a quick offhand conversation yesterday, and he's just sort of like, it sort of felt like Blue Fingers, where, I don't know, I don't know for if this was to everyone, when Blue Fingers mm-hmm. betrayed me, or betrayed, sorry, betrayed, uh... <laughs> wow, I didn't realize you took it so personally. <laughs> sorry, I, I'm getting my pronouns all over the place. No, um, when he betrayed, uh, the Susabron, oh, you know... Susabron and, and Siri, yeah. And Siri, yeah. I was sort of, oh... I forgot he's a character. Like, see, I didn't. I didn't have that problem. I just didn't see it coming at all. Because yeah, I, it was, was it was out of nowhere. Like he was just he was the nice administrator guy that was sort of you know leading like his people's underground thing. But yeah. it didn't occur to me that it would go as far as it did. Yeah, he I felt like a lot of the foreshadowing in that book had some issues. Like yeah. it was kind of there, but it, but this it wasn't like there. This one, I, it's one of those things. Like when it happened, I I was like, I feel like. Had the previous two books been to the quality of this third one, Mm -hmm. this would have had more an impact and would have, like, wouldn't have felt so out of left field. Mm -hmm. Because it's just one of those, I feel like the quality in the early chapters, not ruined, it wasn't like completely ruined, but it definitely lessened the sting of this reveal because it was sort of like Eloran. Oh, that's right. It's his assistant now. Who was he in the beginning again? <laughs> yeah, and and it's the redhead is Darren, D I R I N. Yeah, okay, that, that is Darren. So okay, I looked him up. Um, but yeah, it's just, I feel like if the first two had had this quality of production, then I, I feel like White Sand itself would have been a lot more popular. Mm-hmm. As it is, when I look through discussions of it, a lot of people rank it at the very very bottom. Yeah, and I mean, I think just 
going back to again the medium that it's a graphic novel versus a, a mm-hmm. written novel that it's well, some people are just turned off to that too just right in and general. that's fair as well what i think the other problem is if you are investing in a story and paying for it you expect mm-hmm. a certain cost for an expected amount of time of reading this is a lot less time of reading mm-hmm. and so yeah, I but think i mean there's you, a lot you of get the artwork who... but that's not as valuable to some people and and i like the artwork in the later books a lot more mm-hmm. than i do the first book but we've We've, yeah, we've, we've been that through a that lot. discussion. <laughs> but yeah, no, it's so. it definitely, I would like at some point, like uh, Brandon, to release White Sands, the definitive remaster edition mm-hmm. on Blu-ray or something. Mm-hmm. I like that X-Men that has like the moving drawings. like they're, they're Oh, like the, the animatics? Yeah, it's I can't remember the exact term, but Sorry, they did. I'm not sure about that. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I muted her, yeah, she has no... <laughs> There, there was an X-Men thing that had, like, it was mostly still pictures, but they animated it so, a little bit. Yeah. I can't remember the term. But. Or maybe yeah, White Sands, the pop-up book. It's li- living <laughs> comics, essentially. <laughs> yeah. All right, so let's take a look, because basically what is happening is Kenton is going around and securing votes from all the different people. He's he's playing mm-hmm. politics. Yeah. So he already got In a the... Uh, book? He what? already got the Lord Artisan's vote. Um, I can't remember what was the what was the lady judges like did he have to get her vote or was she willing she, to vote for him in she's case a vote, but I think she said that she has to have everybody else or something like that and in the end she ends up changing and so it's Aeus who she has oh, vote right. in her place that's right she has Ash vote in her place which Ash has a very interesting story arc is that how you say it or is it I, I pronounce it Ash because that's the way you pronounce it um like the Celtic form of it spelled that oh. way. It's, it's, uh, I was pronouncing it ice. I, well, cause <laughs> we all say it different ways. <laughs> the, the reason I say it that way is because that those three letters are, can be used as a diminutive of Ashlyn, which is a I S L I N G. And so I pronounce it Ash. That said, he very likely means a S or ice or something something but i liked ice so for our, our so poor cold. listeners that's what it's the same person <laughs> mm-hmm. well and so. in the original version she was a guy so oh really so it wouldn't have been based on ashlyn because it's a guy it was a male and <laughs> though ashley is a male's name as well which is right so weird but anyway um yeah i did but like that quote a- that you that you put in there for that she's she says We're, when she's talking to the lady judge uh-huh where, where she says, uh, if one dies nobly for an evil cause, are they a misguided hero or a sinner of the worst kind because they tried to make that evil seem good? Mm. And I love, you know, the lady judge's response is, I only judge law, not morality. And it's kind of like, I'm, like not, I'm not touching You've got to figure that's... that one out for yourself. <laughs> yeah. Which is probably part of why she picks her mm-hmm. to be the, the final vote, as well as the fact that she knew that she, he she watched kenton the whole time and so mm-hmm. she would have had a better view of him than pretty much anybody else right who was voting well and you know she's of course got her single-minded pursuit of Sherazan. she's trying to figure mm-hmm. out who he is and, and how to tear get him, him down and, yeah now th- this is the uh this is the part where i was just like oh wait he was a character was tame because yeah. i don't remember him in either of the other he's, two books he's I, a very I, small part i i, because I reread him. them before okay. I did the, the third one. But he, I don't remember him being huge, but I remember him as a person. And I was like, oh, okay. And then when I got to the third one, I had to like flip back and go, wait, I do vaguely remember him, but I didn't remember his name exactly. Yeah. Well, especially uh, for the way that she talked about him, you know, it, it felt like he should have had a bigger role. Mm-hmm. And so, again, that betrayal would have had more of an impact. Yeah. So Jordan, you had you were gonna say something? Uh, no, I just there was an interesting subplot with her, just because we don't get much about their religion other than it's a very strict one about, you know, what days you can do what here and when, mm-hmm. and what you do with dead bodies because they talk yeah. about that. Well, and that's not like she's not the same religion as the Kirstians, I don't think. But it's it. I thought they were. I think it's. I think it's religions. related. I thought yeah, they were right. Like kind religions. of right, but yeah, it, it's, it's like maybe it's like like, like Catholicism Jewish and, and Greek Orthodox or something. Or anyway, related somehow. Yeah, because yeah. they both they both find sand mastery abhorrent. 
Well, so. and she could she understood the rules and could critique when the person attacked on the wrong day. Yeah, mm-hmm. and I think because she, I think it was her that pointed out that she's like they shouldn't have been able to attack because they well, don't. And, but again, part of that is just she knows these. Like it, it's her job mm-hmm. to know this kind of thing. Yeah, and so. But I don't think it's because that they're actually the same religion. Because no, I think they're they're. It just feels like they're. It felt like they were related. sibling there's religions a, to me. There's a connection. Yeah, but I don't know because yeah. the way but she I mean, was critiquing them, it was like it was more than just oh, this was the wrong day. It was like she was kind of disgusted with how sloppy it was, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. just it, I don't know to an exacting religion that felt more appropriate to me. Yeah. Right. There was some sort of relation, but I, I don't know. I, her art it's was, not 100% was clear. probably the more... In, she was, had, probably had the second most interesting arc to me in the book. First being? Mm-hmm. Uh, first being the the Lord uh, ship guy. Oh, the Lord Admiral. <laughs> Lord Admiral. That's the word I was looking for. Mm. All right. So uh, why don't you start us off talking about him because well, that okay. is a great so we met him before and he was the drunk who only voted against whatever the other guy did they. which yeah which you're know, like wow that puts uh, him in a difficult situation when, a when, when, two, vote, he can't do when it. two votes are uh, quantum locked with each other mm-hmm. but uh it, uh it is nice to know why he hates him so much too yeah you find out in this one mm-hmm. but i love like his whole story of how <coughs> he ended up there and how he is drinking himself to death out of the most curious out of pure spite. spite. <laughs> <laughs> he is. He's like, this is expensive. I'm going to keep drinking it. <laughs> just mm-hmm. keep drinking it. Because they have to pay for everything that he eats and drinks. And it's just like, yep. man, that is, that's playing a long game. It's like, do you know oh, how yeah. much wine costs? <laughs> no. <laughs> he's like, it's a well, lot. Well, it's, it's like a well, thousand of whatever the money is. And you say he's playing a long game, and we find out he's been playing a long game, and it's oh, kind of amazing. Yeah. And like that would the second it, time that he gets his stuff taken from when he becomes the the ship when he becomes the Lord Admiral, mm-hmm. I feel sorry for him because I mean he he finally was making a lot of money, and then he gets it pulled out under the rug, and the other guy right. becomes the Lord Merchant, right? Yeah, Lord because Admiral. he oh oh no, you're talking no, about Vey. the first one, yeah, and and Vey becomes Lord Ad or Lord, Lord Merchant. Lord Admiral, like, Lord then, Merchant, yes. Yeah, and, and then, then Lockall, L- L- I believe, or Lockall, L- something like that. It's uh-huh. I can't I remember anybody's name. Um, yeah, there's but, a lot um, of just, names yeah. here that are close to names from other books. Well, and they also don't mint, you know say the names quite as often. They're, they're pretty short, the, quick, the graphic yeah, and, novel. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, so but anyway, then he's he starts building up his all of his ships inside the ship guild, basically, and or ship. Ship owners? No, the ship owner circle is the leadership. Anyway, and then they're like, "Oh, you're getting too rich, so we're gonna take it away from you." And so then he just has his son earn all mm-hmm. of his, who's his servant, quote unquote. You know, it's interesting and, the concept of a political position as a punishment. punishment? Yeah, as golden <laughs> handcuffs, essentially. Yeah, mm-hmm. and because the only other time, like that's one of those things. I'm like, Brandon hasn't really delve too much into that concept the only other one i can think of that's even similar is what happened to gox where they're worried that whoever is prime aka six is just going to get assassinated so Mm -hmm. oh yeah but even that that wasn't a punishment that was a we're trying to avoid dying well and it has just enough power to not appear that way to anyone outside of the helm yeah um Mm -hmm. you know they uh because he basically has two powers to authority he can he has an unlimited budget for food and drink Mm -hmm. and so he spends as much as he possibly can doing that and he can commandeer any ship he wants and i think it's just any one ship but yeah um but so it's it's when he calls in all 12 ships is when it's his the ones that he physically owns through his son and and that's what happens is you know he's not allowed to own any property as the Lord Admiral, but it doesn't his say servant. anything about his servants. And mm-hmm. his servant happens to be his boy. Yep. And, <laughs> and then so he makes his. Yeah. I didn't quite figure out how all this worked. Like, I read it, and I kind of understood it, but it felt like when someone starts combining effects in, uh, in like D and D. I don't quite understand how you got three different attacks with your offhand weapon and they all crit, but. 
It forever. sounds like you really hey. know what you're talking about. <laughs> but the thing is, um, so basically what happened from what I could tell is anytime he was going to earn something, it was put in his son's name instead. As soon as he was released from being the Lord Admiral, his son signed everything over to him. And, so and he had the paperwork his. already. He didn't exactly, need to sign exactly. It. it was ready to be signed. And then they had Ash Ver- you know, uh, <laughs> verify. It's like, the, yep, that looks everything's in order. <laughs> it's like, so all of these ships are mine and they're going to commandeer. And they're going to basically blockade. monopolize. They're going to blockade your, your port. Yeah. And they just fill it up so you can't do any business. And the thing is that put the entire circle in a bind. And he's like, so uh, you're going to make Lakal. The Lord Admiral now. <laughs> and he's like, and he gives, he gives him an out. He's like, if you vote in favor, then I will let you out of it. You and know? restore all your property to you. Which I didn't get the option of. Yeah. <laughs> I'm oh, going to make so you an offer you can't refuse. <laughs> well, and, uh, and I like the fact that that, in spite of the fact that Lord Vey is going to vote with him, earns him... Uh, Oh, what's his name? I blanked. Uh, Delius. He earns him Delius's vote. He's like, I understand what it is to be manipulated and put into a bind and mm-hmm. and just all the all this stuff. And I don't like it. So you know what? You got my vote. Yeah. The stuff. I just. With, I love the stuff with Vey was interesting too. Oh, it was so cool. Oh yeah, that was the, the black Lord Merchant. Male. Yes. Yes. Well, the one who he he. Uh, <laughs> He comes in and he's, you know, he tells him, I realize that you have all of the, you know, that the debt isn't from us to you. It's the other way around. Mm-hmm. And just the concept that, you know, every Lord Merchant not only inherits previous wealth, he also inherits previous debt to mm-hmm. the point where it was impossible for any of them, like any following Lord Merchant to get out of that debt, particularly with all the interest. Yeah, my which favorite, the my favorite was the which first. The Sandmasters meeting. would put it back in. Yeah. Oh, the first meeting mm-hmm. was good. He's like, yeah, I know about the thing. Well, the, yes. You know about He's the like, thing? Oh. I I totally know about the thing. Yes, the thing with the thing. And it's like, yes, I know about Project Jabberwocky. Don't you know about Project Jabberwocky? <laughs> Jabberwocky? <laughs> totally. Yes. Yeah. Uh, better off. And then Vay's like, nice. nope, nope, you don't know. Yeah, he just completely calls his bluff. And then he comes in and he's like, no, I do know what the issue is. Here we go. Mm-hmm. Well, it's this. And I love it because it's so like when you're a kid and you d- did something and you know you're in trouble for it. You're like, mom doesn't uh-huh. know about it yet. Mom doesn't know about it yet. And it's just you're just praying. Mom always she knows. never. <laughs> she doesn't. I got away with like two specific things. But the well, it's just one of those things. You're just like she like as long as they don't know about it. I'm okay. And so he's just like, I ain't going to clear this up for him. It's, I got to yeah. keep them as far in the dark as possible. And I just yeah. love it. He comes in. I know about the debt. It's just, I can see this. Ah, son of a gun. <laughs> <laughs> but, but the way he manipulates it, not manipulates it, actually. He just. He kind of does. And he manipulates well, it the same he, way. He that manipulates Sh- it the Shy same does. way that Shy does. Yeah. yeah. He's like through being purely genuine. He's like, I'm going to forgive the debt. He's just like. What do you what? want? He's like, nothing. Vote the way your conscience demands. He's like, but so, I also want to take out a loan. And then he's like, he's like, I want to take out a loan. And he uses that to pay off his other debt, the, the DM's other debts. And mm-hmm. he's like, and we'll pay this back by working for the other guilds. Yeah, yeah for like, the other things and actually st- doing stuff. I, I like it because comparing it to <laughs> Shy, Shy uh, didn't uh, like she was genuine with him. And mm-hmm. that's what convinced Gaudon. This guy is so cynical that he's not believing him until they get to the contract part. And he's like, ah, so we're still in your debt. Okay, very well, I accept. Because he feels like it's still posturing. Like, he doesn't trust the genuine uh-huh. side. He trusts the snake idea. Mm-hmm. Well, because that's sort of what he has that's, had to be. Yeah, And I mean, he, he's, he's dealt that's with also how the, he got his the power. Sandmasters for and how everybody else seems to work. Mm-hmm. But the Sandmasters apparently have have just been ripping them off for years and years and years and adding yeah. more and more interest to it. Mm-hmm. And to have somebody flip so far is probably, he just can't fathom that they would really do that. Mm-hmm. But yeah, it's just, I Kenton's, you know, what he's trying to do is he's trying to go through and change from within mm-hmm. and change public opinion. And the best way to do that, is actually to be genuine, at least, 
you know, and it just, it works. It's like suddenly people try not trusting you, but you've got this history of being decent. It, it's, it's right there. I mean, he's, he's not hiding anything. Mm-hmm. Well, he's saying, the fact we will work. Here's this loan we're doing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. He, he's bad well, at the politicking. And mm-hmm. bullying. Because, like, we see what happens when he goes to see the Lord Farmer. Yeah, and he's, and he, to try and find. Oh. Lord Vey. Or is, yeah, it's Lord Vey. You're right. Yeah, he's looking for Lord Vey. And, and the guy's like, here, you know, he told me not to tell. Please don't hurt us. And he's like, fine. This he's is like, not I, me. I don't like doing this. This isn't, this isn't a good thing. I don't, this mm-hmm. isn't me. And so gradually he genuinely wins everyone over, including Ash. Mm-hmm. And I think it's a lot of those scenes where she's watching him not huh. be a bully and not. Mm-hmm. Well, you and know, then, of course, the, the straw that breaks the camel's back is when he saves her family. Yeah, because she's, what is it? She's stuck between two hard choices. Either she's supposed to go save him, isn't it? Him or her family. And she's like, I can't no, do that. No, it was that, an or- you know? the orphanage. No. Oh, yeah. it's the orphanage. It was literally oh, okay. the most evil thing possible. Like, short of a save bus your full kid of... or the poor kids that don't have parents It's, it's the trolley problem. Yeah, short of the bus full of nuns. Like, that was <laughs> as difficult yeah. the... The, the choice could be here's the orphanage that you grew up in <laughs> which with, you know with tons of kids innocent children or there's your family are you going to mm-hmm. be selfish or <laughs> and that's you know that's kind of who ash is is she's you know i've got to choose this over myself mm-hmm. and you know she gets there and kitten has rescued Saved her them. family and, she's just, yeah. and she says you know the lord you know uh, the Sand Lord may condemn me for this, but thank you. Genuinely, <laughs> like it's and it's like a, just an absolutely sincere mm-hmm. thank you. And then when the time to vote comes around, and the the Lady Judge hands it over to to her and her, you know, and immediately Kitten's just like, "I'm doomed. I'm so screwed." Because <laughs> I mean, she, she hasn't. Him. Yeah, that like the one thank you was the only time she didn't say anything. Like that's the one mm-hmm. nice thing she said to him. Like pretty much well, the like whole time. you know but before they been, go yeah. before they go on one of their outings she uh she stops at home and she's like you're not welcome inside don't do anything heretical in front of me and embarrass and he's, me and he's like oh, why would i do that no you know and <laughs> yeah like because he kind of tricks her into even letting him go on that errand because uh-huh. he's like well i'm gonna go meet with this random person so i guess you're supposed to come with me to that so we can just do your thing on the way and she's yep. like fine <laughs> Mom, we're inevitably going to be best friends. Let's move to She eventually <laughs> develops a very, very grudging respect for him. Yeah. And it's, again, that, that I think was handled very well across all three books because it just, it was a slow burn mm-hmm. and it worked very, very well. Yeah. It didn't the seem fa- forced. Let's see. Now, the Lord Farmer always votes with Vey, doesn't he? Oh, goodness. Because I think that's why he changed his mind because Vey votes and then they ask the Lord, or the Lord Farmer and he's just like, I, I, in favor, I guess. You know, he's got this really confused yeah. look on his face. Like, like, I don't um, know what's going on. I guess on. I vote in favor of the DM. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, I, but and then, of course, he won over the he won over the Masons Guild when yeah when, when he helped them yeah because Trell was there. Yeah, and we still Trell. have no clue why that was significant or anything. It just sort of happened. Right. I really wish the book three people had handled it. <laughs> And we and we know the name is there, and it's just like okay. Mm. I mean, we got this really cool, sh- like upward angled shot of him, and so it's clearly uh-huh. meant to be important. Guys, look, it's like it's a, f- it's a full page too. Okay, full but page. You, you didn't explain anything. You just name dropped. Just, just you're like there. everyone's worst friend in conversation. <laughs> yep. Well, and 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 Brandon occasionally brings the brings this up himself in words of Brandon. Somebody asks something about Trell. He's like. Who is Trell? Maybe he's this. Guy. Maybe he's this guy that was worshipped. Maybe he's a uh, he's a, just a random worker on Taldane. Who knows? Who knows? <laughs> just like Brandon, stop trying to be cute. Don't do it. <laughs> Volume two uh, wasn't good enough for you to be cute. <laughs> <laughs> Although to be fair, that scene happened after the after the art change. So <laughs> it wasn't just the art change with that book, though. That was the issue. I know. I know. Oh, did anyone uh, else get really like more thirsty in the first book? Just yes. everything did probably, look, yeah. Everything My just looked tastes like emails. That's true. 
does taste like. Pancakes. I don't know. I don't know this. Anyway, quote. it's a it's strong a strong bad, bad reference. Oh, it's been so long. <laughs> so long. Too long. Yeah. No, but it it's one of these things that I like as it goes through, and when it ends with with ice. I like her thought of, I told him, like, even if he saved my life, you know, I wouldn't do it. But he saved the one thing that mattered to me more than my own life. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Yeah, absolutely. Um, okay, so let's talk a little. Oh, gosh, I just remembered. So let's talk a little bit more about Sherazan and, you know, how she kind of figures out. that Because first... They find um, Eric's father, who nobody yeah. knows where he is. He's sort of disappeared. He's in a basement. And they find him in the basement, and he's been, like, tortured. They took First off, off his eyelids. Well, they've taken him into the dark, which, remember, all the people on Dayside are uncomfortable they're, in They're darkness. uncomfortable in the dark because it's the, always bright. The only people who, were, who weren't, you know, thrown off by the darkness were Bayon and Chrysala. Because they're used to it, you know. Because mm-hmm, they're from Dark Side. Mm-hmm. They have embraced the Dark Side. <laughs> Sorry, you know <laughs> I had to cookies. make that reference. Come on. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, they find him, and he's been given like drugs to enhance his fear. Like they've basically scarecrowed him, mm-hmm. and then stuck him in the dark and cut off his eyelids so he can't close his eyes against the darkness. Which is horrible. That's so messed horrible. up. And, you know, and then it just sort of progresses. She is approached by Tane, I believe. And he says, hey, we found Sherazan. Come on. You know, I was about to head over there. Come with me. And Mm -hmm. she comes. And then suddenly he's like, oh. And he does sort of the 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 villain reveal where he's just like ha, you know he it that like you can almost hear him doing an evil chuckle to himself ah. you, know, you fool you know it was me like, all along you can you can just hear him vamping for the camera well i just love the line never to accept a weapon from someone you don't trust oh but i guess you did <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, that's oh, right cuz he gives her like fake things mm-hmm. in her little thing but she yep. does she kill them and she or does someone have to help her? I'm trying to remember. I, I think she, she's she alone. Up. Yeah, is but she? she just manages. Well, because that's what, that's when she he sends her off. Like you have to choose. Oh, that's right. That's right. Because he and doesn't. So she has to because like a proper villain, he doesn't mm-hmm. just want to to kill her. He wants to taint her as well. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. He wants to make her suffer. Yeah, that, that's the thing is he wants to break her pristine, you know, like her, her self view, her, I now he just, wants to make her doubt. I just want to make her like, he's now got the Bane voice. I was wondering what would break first, your spirit or your body. And there we go. Oh, all the quotes today. <laughs> uh, it's a reference free or not reference free, a reference filled night. Yes. So many references. The best. Um, we haven't talked about Nilto either. We haven't. Oh, we haven't talked about Nilto. Mm-hmm. Tell us about Nilto. So Nilto is the the beggar lord, and he always mm-hmm. looked really creepy. And I could have sworn he did not like his skin seemed lighter in the earlier books. But I he had might bandages be remember, on his face. It just it seemed. I don't remember him seeming like he had that darkest skin as he actually does, as you find out in this mm-hmm. one. Um, but maybe that's just. I don't know. I don't remember. Um, but he he gets manipulated by Chris a couple times and uh-huh. he's he's not very happy about it because it ends up that he's actually Gavin is it Gavin yes it's Gavin I always want to say Gavin but it's Gavin who was the prince and was her fiance and he apparently took a pistol shot to the face and so that's yeah. why he's wearing the stuff or he's like still doing bandages. remarkably well for someone who's been shot oh, in the face oh yeah yeah he's doing and so that's why he's able to give her the ring and the um his pistol. ring and his and his pistol because he had them because they're his <laughs> yeah um and i did what was it and so when she's trying to find bayon because she, mm-hmm. I don't, why does she want to find bayon i'm trying to, to get information because, out of him. Is it, well because he's disappeared he quote betrayed her oh but i knew they were trying to find they wanted some information from bayon i can't remember what the information was but she uh-huh. she wanted and so she tries to um, i think she to wants get, to know why he attacked her 
Oh, that might be it. Yeah, it might be that. And so she tries to get Nilto. Or to, not att- not attacked her, but but betrayed like, her and left. Basically, her. what he was up to and what was go- just what the sto- whole story was. Mm-hmm. She wants to understand what's going on. Mm-hmm. Um, but when she's talking to Nilto about it, he's like, "Oh, a lover." It is, I just think it was interesting that it's coming from him when you know who he is. You're like, "Oh, exactly." You wonder he's if like, there's what? that little smidgen of jealousy or something. But well, or but bitterness same, because bitterness. Again, you know, yeah, you she's don't know. changed since he knew her. Mm-hmm. It seems like. They've they've very much grown very different. Like he's taken to a, and like apparently his thing was he was he was all for equality of everybody, which continues mm-hmm. with Nilso. He takes it to a whole other extreme. Mm-hmm. Whereas she's learning diplomacy and knowing how to. She's a lot more observant but about she, a lot of things too. Yeah, she wasn't at all involved in politics back home. She mm-hmm. sort of disdained it, and so now that she's left, he's like, "You're a lot more involved." I mean, she's and, fully embraced it by that point, and uh huh, and does a lot better in it. Mm-hmm. But yeah, so she she offers to pay him to find Bayon, mm-hmm. and then he. Well, she doesn't know it's him at that. point. She doesn't know who it is at that point. Yeah, um, but then she. She won't discover that it it's is. him till chapter three. Chapter three. So. Um, Was it chapter three? I don't it, know, but it's, it might have uh, been four. But you know, it's a Beauty and the Beast thing. Beauty and the Beast. We're yes, doing our quotes tonight, but um, yeah. So she she realizes it's it's him, and she meets him at the dock. And mm-hmm. calls him out, and he's like, "You've got to stop saying my name." <laughs> well, I, I love that he's like, "Well, how did you figure it out?" She's like, "You called me Chris." And he's like, "Not Chris Sala, have... which was the name that she'd been going by." Mm-hmm. And he's like, "You wouldn't have noticed that before that there, you know, that I'd slipped up." Uh huh. Well, and he also said, so... "I need to be more careful." Mm-hmm. And then um, Akron tries to kill him. Mm-hmm. I always get her her other two people confused: yeah, Ak- Akron and Cinder. Rosencrantz and, and Guildenstern. <laughs> is is Cinder the the professor? I think they're both think professors, aren't they? I think they're both professors. They they refer to so him as Professor Akron. Okay. So. So anyway, so yeah, so Akron is another double agent, whatever thing, spy, yeah. whatever, and so he tries to kill, um, Kenton. Gavin. No, oh, Gavin. 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 Right. Not Kenton. Kenton's not Sorry. trying to be killed in this time for once. Um, yeah. And so then Bayon. It's the Kirstians who are kill, trying to kill Kim. Yeah. So then Bayon tries to defend, you know, like, defend well, yeah, it's him. Like, it was kind of <laughs> awesome because he's about <laughs> to attack part. her and then Bayon stabs the guy from behind. Mm-hmm. I, thought he, did he, and, I thought he shot him. No, he doesn't have his pistol right now, I don't think. There was a lot he, of it, blood. You know what? I'm I thought look. I saw a sword coming out of the guy. All I know was there was a ton of blood and then the ne- and he had like her like to his back like you know her back to him and like a gun pointed at her he dies with a lot of blood she's wearing white and like she stands up there is not a drop of blood on her and i'm just like but that's her superpower somehow she can keep her pure <laughs> white clothing from ever getting stained by anything she can handle her red wine apparently so so akron is Shooting. Where is it? I miss it. Ah, these pages stick. That's what. My gets complaint me. wasn't the d- method of death. My complaint was the amount of blood, and she got none on her. Oh, oh, it's Bayon. Bayon throws a crate. Drops okay. a crate on him. So he drops a crate on him and knocks the gun out of his hand, and knocks him down, and, and doesn't knock him out. And then they split okay. up because because Akron shoots Bayon and like nicks his his arm, but they can't tell that it's just that. And so then they split up. And then she swings the crane at Akron and kills him. Okay. Interesting. Yes. Yeah, it's just, so that's, that's it's hard what to keep it track is. of everything that happened. <laughs> I know. And that's the other thing is there's so much of it that because it's a visual format, you have to figure out exactly what happened rather than having Brandon say it to you in beautiful words. Mm-hmm. Speaking so. of just seeing things, we haven't talked about the fact that there's a lot of face shaped clouds in this book. Yes, yes I noticed are. it more this time. Like, I don't, like, the, the last time I read it, I didn't really notice it because I was paying more attention to the story. Much, but this time I was like, what? There's how many did we two. count? We counted six. I think we counted, six. like, six or seven. So there's the beginning, I know. There's a cloud. Is but it yeah, in the first book, too? I don't know about I, we I didn't notice it. Book. But, yeah, just in this book, mm. we saw a bunch of them. But, uh, and Jordan saw a lot more than I only noticed a couple at the very end, but it's across the whole book. Because I remember um, I saw at least two, and I remember one was earlier, and then one was towards the end, like the last mm-hmm. page. I, and they like do—they are—they each one is a different face. 
There's so, is it different? Uh, there's a there, yeah. There's definitely at least a male one and a female one. They look different to okay. me. Okay. Oh, Which two. could still be Bavadin. Well, that's the because, thing. Like, I think they're all because, supposed to represent different aspects of Bavadin. Yeah. Well, th- uh, that, Brandon, Brandon has said, or it, Brandon has said that there are planets where the entire pantheon is her. Yeah. Well, like, and then on autonomy, autonomy, why not split up? There's, uh-huh. who, there's whoever, uh, whoever spoke Three. to Elorin in the sand. The Sand Lord. Yeah. Yeah. Which and, the religion says is the same thing. But. I personally wonder if one of the autonomy uh, personalities hasn't gone rogue. Huh. I, I, That's an it, interesting thought. I have personally liked the idea of... I feel like there should be at least one aspect that is occupying the role of... Every, panthe- every good Greek pantheon, Roman pantheon, they always have one person that isn't getting along with the others. Hmm. One trickster or, some, and, or somebody. And if, well, I mean, it, even has, in the even in the Cosmere, we've got race. Yeah, aka, AKA Odium. But the, it feels to me like we have no information, obviously, about autonomy. She's her own microcosm. <laughs> yeah, but she feels like what she has set up is more akin to your traditional fantasy uh, mm. pantheon. Uh, pantheon, and I feel like at least to me, it feels like one. If they're truly autonomous. One should have betrayed them. Hmm. That just—that's my personal personal. She's theory. the uh, she's the fractal of of Adenalsium. So that's my thought. I I, so I, I have little evidence other than the fact that there's so many different faces. Uh-huh. So I found seven. Okay, when I flipped seven. through it, and one of them could have maybe been a guy, but it was harder to tell. The rest of them all seemed female to me. Yeah, but, but we but, did see the Sand Lord, so. Yeah. The one that appeared to Aloran, and I think that was male, you're right. Yeah. Yeah, it's just, I don't know. It just, it seems interesting. But it, mm-hmm. this is this is something that this format lends itself to more than writing would. Because writing, if Autonomy was watching a specific scene, short of a character being like an impression of something else, or, you know... Mm-hmm. You couldn't do or like that. a prickling on your neck, or you know, or yeah. some kind of other sense. You couldn't like that. subtly do that the way that this book does. Mm-hmm. There's mm-hmm. one other thing that they did that they hit around. Hoyt is in a lot of this book. Yeah, I didn't. Oh, I remember. Look yeah, for a loop you, in the first one. You saw him at the very end. I didn't realize. That's what I said when we were prepping, and I oh, was the, like, "Oh, the yeah, that's the, what I didn't realize it was him. It didn't click that it was Hoyt." Uh, okay. I, yeah. I don't look for Hoyt like you guys do. <laughs> yeah, but so I'm this is not my first thought. This one was a bit easier because he, they, this book they clearly always put him with a loot, and so there's mm-hmm. several scenes. And he starts where you talking see... about art or something like that, which he he talks about in Roshar too quite a bit. Yeah. Right. Is, is art, and so like I can see, I'm like, oh yeah, now I get it. I just wasn't mm-hmm. paying attention to no, him. No, so he at was. The, that point. I can't remember. There were I think there were at least three or four spots where I saw him in this book. One was at the assassination at what looked like a dinner hall. Yeah. Is he in there? Yeah, he's, he's in, in the, the background. background. Just sort of... Jordan, Jordan saw him. I did not. The, and there's, somewhere, and he, he there's somewhere else I saw him where he's just like I remember it in was, the crowd. It was, I think it was in one or two and they're walking through the dark side area or something like that, the dark side neighborhood yeah. or something. And, he pops and up at one or two times in each of the other previous books, just like very, just, just right like, there. You would not see him if you're not looking for him. Do you have? Could you, do you mind reading his, what song he was playing? Like the words of it. I just yeah. Anytime I he can. starts talking about art, it's a very interesting concept. Sign no more, lady. Sign no. That's from Much Ado About Nothing. Hold on. Hold I on. got it. Okay. Got ah! it. What is the meaning of art? For the artist and you are apart, the further the distance from sayer of word, the more that their meanings are lost or are blurred, the more you must guess at the truth that is there, creator creation parted by the breadth of a hair. Sorry, yeah. Bradley Beach to it. <laughs> I, I I waited, I had it and I <laughs> It's interest it's so I wonder First of all, because the last time he talked about art for us on Roshar, he was talking about how, you know, you can make art that is, isn't is hated, but it's not art mm-hmm. that's worth anything. This time he's mm-hmm. talking about how the distance between the artist and the art 
makes the the meaning unclear. I find mm-hmm. that an interesting way to end this book, the book that is furthest in distance from Brandon that hmm. he's ever done. Huh. I hadn't even thought about that. So I I I don't like maybe this was all, always in there. Like maybe this was always part of it. But I don't know, it's just an interesting juxtaposition of facts. Well, it's also um you know, we know that Chrysala is in a way kind of exiled from from, from Taldane, Taldane. You know, in her homeworld and how like I don't know whether we're saying that Chris is the art or Chris is the artist, but she's different. You know, she's separated from her home and where she was created. Mm. The, um, o- the other thing that it could be, it might not actually be art. It could be art is a metaphor for how the magic works. Cause he's saying this right as Bayon's about to, you know, go nuclear. To do his thing. Yeah. And mm-hmm. that's not something that's supposed to happen. Dark siders aren't supposed to be able to have this. And so he's talking about, the art is the you know the further it is the less they know and so the lore of this world could sort of be the art they don't but mm-hmm. they're so separated from the actual basis of it that they don't actually know what the meaning the meaning in this case mm-hmm. the the truth is it could be a metaphor and, for that as well well and we also later in in uh stormlight we see hoyd with a vial of of sand that's been Mm -hmm. Um, that's been partially drained of its investiture which that's something brandon told us that you could do with the sand that it can sort of act as a detector Mm -hmm. so it's just uh, yeah there's a lot there's a whole lot here we haven't even talked about the duel the duel between kenton and dryl and him Which, and Kenton the whole book, like he's going through and like he when they're on the, the ship, he he's trying to figure out how to how to fight Dryle. He's, he's, he's doing master. a DBZ move and he, mm-hmm. he's he's testing himself and strengthening himself by being. It was it was essentially burns thing. himself out for a while. Mm-hmm. It, that was interesting. It's This is one of those. I do wish we were in literature format because I do mm-hmm. think the explanation of overmastery would be a bit better there. I want to understand mm-hmm. why everyone thinks overmastery is permanently done. Like I understand why Kenton thinks that because mm-hmm. he sees the example with Elleran, though we now know it's for different reasons. Mm-hmm. Um, I wonder yeah. if, if just the idea of being disconnected from your sand mastery is, is so disheartening, like with that first day or two that you lose it, mm-hmm. that, that you never they try just, again. They or? never try again. Well, honestly, what I see or, like, or, what or I that it's also just the lore. What I could also see happening is like there was a guy who overmastered and then before he got his powers back died in some sort of combat. Some dehydration remember, they, or something, you know. They know they have no idea how to uh, to fight hand to hand. Kitten is yeah. considered strange for carrying a sword, mm-hmm. and so maybe just what happened is somebody burned themselves out and died before he before got his power could. back, and so just this Everybody fear. Assumed, of, yeah. I, I feel like in the first two books they talked about how. Because Kenton found this out about overmastery and strengthening you, mm-hmm. and he felt and can't and I don't remember the specifics because it's been too long, but he felt like this was a secret that the previous head guys had been hiding, and he I felt like he had some reasoning behind that. Uh-huh. Yeah, that he he wondered if that's why they picked certain people to go higher because they showed more proclivity to be able to overmaster and get stronger. It felt that, like this that's... was because Dry- Dryl didn't know about it either. It looks like yeah, right. Dryl didn't, and so it's just interesting that which makes you wonder what would happen if Dryl did overmaster if he already has twenty five. But that that was I did like the payoff of oh. he had always said I can do more with one than most people can with five, and he had built up to five, but he finally starts winning when he stops using five. Switches to one, one, but he has so much more power behind that one now than he used mm-hmm. to. Well, and he, because it's only one, he can focus all of his attention on it and use it like a scalpel. Yeah, he's got the finesse that mm-hmm. the Dryl well, doesn't have to have because he has 25. So why would you need to be You've got super, power. super precise? Brandon <laughs> has always sort of been a fan of skill and mm-hmm. practice and adeptness over raw power. Yeah. Like he's even he's even talked about. It. I think he even talked about it in the the post chapter in um, for White Sand in Arcanum oh. Unbounded. Yeah. Oh, okay. 
Well, and, and he re- so. he really likes using the comparison of Vin versus Elland. Mm-hmm. Elland has a lot more power. Vin is... Who would win in a fight. Yeah, is so much more <laughs> precise and uses it so much better. Well, and, and he brings up that example when somebody asks him about uh, Harmony versus versus Odium. Because Harmony has significantly more raw power. And somebody asks him, you know, so is... But Harmony is also, you know, would Odium be a threat? Would Harmony be a threat to the other? How would that work? And he said, well, tell me this. You know, Elend has a lot more power than Vin, right? Yes. Who would win in a fight? And the guy says, well, Vin. He says, you have your answer. Hmm. Because Brandon likes to speak cryptically and metaphorically because he is, if nothing else, a storyteller. Also mm-hmm. a lice friend. <laughs> that, that's a crypt. That's what authors yeah. are, yes. Anyway. Um, but yeah, so th- yeah, the fight itself, it's just, it's really cool. Now this, of course, happens before the vote, which I thought it was interesting. He's like, because after the vote, there may not be a DM, so let's get this over with. And- just, yeah, and... You see, and if I were him, I would like, let's get the vote first out of the way. And if there's not a DM, I could just let Dryl not kill me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but that's not who Kitten is. No, it's Well, Dryl forces his hand, too, I thought, didn't he? I thought Dryl forced his hand, that he's like, you have to do it before. Yeah, also, Dryl has a really, really emo haircut. He oh, does. Yeah. Like, I, he I really expect him to be like the bassist it's, for My Chemical Romance or something. It's uh, it's like My Feral Chemical um, Romance. It's like Gary Oldman's haircut in uh, The Fifth Element. Yeah. Oh, I'd forgotten about that. But no, I, so. I like that Kenton at the end makes him his friend too. He yeah. makes up. He's he's got the magic of friendship. Friendship is well, I mean, magic. Need, I've been he, informed. <laughs> He, he needs a friend. I mean, one of them betrayed him and he had to kill. The other one went to dark side. Went to yeah. the dark side. Wow. It's back. Anyway. Actually, both but, technically so, went to the dark side, just in opposite directions. <laughs> my children were watching My Little Pony again, so I have the magic of friendship going on in my head way too much right now. So, yeah. Oh, man. But mm. so he, he needs a new friend. So who does he make friends with? Clearly his enemy. Everybody. That's how it works. I mean, it's how it works in DBZ. So why not here? Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Uh, guys, <laughs> we did it. I know. We have made it through the entire published major works of the Cosmere. I said major works, Jordan. Don't say it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but guys, you know what else that means? I think it is time for a, for a celebration. So to celebrate, I have gotten each of you a gift. This will be doubling as your Christmas present. Okay. I might get something small just to note, but I mean, but, yeah. So if y'all want slightly, apparently, whatever he's gotten us, he can't wait any further. I am so excited about this. This so is also go. Ahead. This is partially my also, fault because I gave him his okay. Christmas gift early. Partially. Open it. So go ahead and open them. Okay, I gotta figure out how to. Open and I actually it. got something similar for myself, just to yeah. match up. Are these staple? The staple? They're staple. Uh, yeah. Oh, feel free okay. to just rip the. Feel free to just. I thought it was it. like it's... pinned, and I couldn't figure it out. I'm like, where's the end no. of the pin? Ah! <laughs> it's so hard. Oh my goodness! Hold funny? it up to the camera so people can see. So I found a um, one of our followers on Instagram. Her name is Faceless Frey. And she actually created her own little custom. Lower, Amy. Little, oh, sorry. I'm bad. No right here? Yes. She here? actually created okay, her we'll own custom Cosmere Funko Pops. So for Amy, I got one of Shalon. For Jordan, I got Kelsier. And for myself, Hoid. I got my very, very favorite traveler, oh, Hoyd, in The so Wandering Year. And speaking so- of the loot that Jordan was talking about. He's got it. Yeah, it's got a loot. So, hey, who, so yeah. So who did this? Faceless Frey. She's one of our followers on okay. Instagram. But she did, so she's got like I don't she's know got, if you can't see this. Like yeah. she did an amazing job on the mist cloak she here. Did. This is impressive. Yeah. She's and got a whole pattern in chalk or no? Uh, what do you? Charcoal. Uh, charcoal. Yes. Yep. So, do y'all want to know what what uh, pops these are made from? Yes. Because basically, what she did is she took multiple pops, literally popped the head off. 
and put it on a new body. Mm-hmm. So Kelsier is the body of um, uh, what's it? Newt Scamander from Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them. Okay, and the, the head of uh, oh my, Blake it down his name, hockey player, the great one, Wayne Gretzky. Gretzky? Wayne Gretzky. <laughs> so that's the head of Wayne Gretzky and the body of Newt Scamander. Shalon. But of course, is... that clearly makes it closer. <laughs> but Sh- no, Shalon is the body of uh, uh, Jane Bennett from Pride and Prejudice and Zombies. Ooh. and the head of Buttercup from The Princess Bride. She actually added in the little hair twirlies on the front, so those are actually oh, yeah. made of of uh, sculpt, sculptable Sculpey. epoxy. Sculpey or something, yeah. Epoxy. Epoxy. And then She's a little book Hoid and is the body of Saruman and the head Aww. of Captain Jack Harkness from I Doctor Who. I can see that, yeah. 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 <laughs> but the thing I love, so have either of y'all read um, The Wanderer? It's a very, very short story scene that, mm-hmm. that Brandon wrote. It's a conversation between Hoyd and Frost. It happens no, immediately after it. No. it happens immediately after the events of Mistborn Era One. Huh. It's it's fascinating because he goes to this area where there is no color. What? Um and he, he has with him he he's eating a pomegranate, like the pomegranate seeds. Mm-hmm. So what he what this the Saruman was originally holding was the Palantir, and she oh. put on a little uh, a little stimmy Stem thing it. on top. What's a Palantir to make it look again? Palantir this is the is the, the little yeah, ball that they can see through the, the yeah. magic or glass, whatever that they. It's the thing that that Pippin touches and then sees the eye of Sauron when they're in in <sighs> yeah. the in Moria. And Crystal that was ball. Bad. Yeah, yes, it was bad. very very bad. So, yeah, I just I saw these. She has actually got she's made for herself like all of the main characters of Stormlight. Um, she mm-hmm. hadn't ever made a Kelsier. So when I requested that one, she was like, I think I can do that. And she immediately just did a mock up like two minutes later. And I was like, that, yes. that's perfect. Yeah, you, this you, is you absolutely really nailed good. it. <laughs> like like so. she's even got the scars on it and everything. Right. Yeah. Well, and Shalon, like Jane Bennett was actually wearing like just a a sleeveless strapped strappy dress mm-hmm. and so she put all of the detail into it to make it a voran hava oh, she made did? a safe hand she made a safe she hand did. for it uh-huh and it's just it's really cool and then yeah like i said with oh i she, can she, i can see now where made, she has a little knife on her band on her pant leg well let's uh-huh. she wouldn't have so how do you okay. how do you spell she her made name the loot. so that others can find her faceless fray f-r-e-y okay I can't remember if there's an un- underscore between those or not, but no, but yeah, she's definitely worth checking out. I'm pretty sure you so just cool. gave a bunch of people uh, holiday gifts for their, <laughs> for their friends. Bill. So, well, I mean, she she does it all by hand, and she you know, so it it takes yeah. some time to get them done. Um, actually, at uh, I think it was the Tel Aviv. You know, Brandon's on tour in in Israel and Europe right now. He's in, he was in Prague. Most he was in Prague. Like he was in Prague like yesterday or something. Yeah. But anyway, at the Tel Aviv signing, somebody showed up and gave him a Funko pop complete with box of Brandon Sanders. I know. He posted And I saw it, that. And I was like, I want it. Hmm. It's over $200. <laughs> I am still tempted. <laughs> hmm. But yeah. So. Thank yeah. you, Bill. Yeah, uh-huh. thank you. This is so. Uh, How'd you so happy? You found them through just Instagram, like they contacted she, you. She she was one of our followers. Okay, and I I followed her back, and these things kept popping up, and I'm just like, these are so cool. Do I you think, do commissions? I think I, I, think I almost saw spoiled part of the, things when when you yep. were talking with her on Instagram, and I was yep. like, I kept getting notifications for the messages, and I was just like, well, I I don't want to reply and be like, um, do you want to go to a private thing because I'm seeing it? But then you caught and that I, I was, and I did. Did you I, I was see that like, I was seeing it, or was it no? But else? I, but I was just like Amy's probably. I'm getting notifications, so pre- Amy probably. Amy's probably too. getting them too. <laughs> and so, so I didn't get. I just was thought you were just getting a hoid. I didn't know there was there was more. Uh huh. But well, yeah, this was, is yeah. this is impressive. It's so cool. <laughs> She's done some good work. Anyway, so oh I've been goodness. really excited. I didn't excited even notice it. She put ash on his shoes. Jeez. <laughs> yeah, she did. <laughs> no, she did a dang good job. Sorry, I just keep staring. Well, at and it. like the, the the chalk that Shalon is holding, or the mm-hmm. the charcoal, charcoal? Yeah. was originally a sword. 
Oh, yeah. But she snapped it off and painted it black, and mm-hmm. it actually it looks worked. like it a looks, piece of charcoal. Yeah, it does. Man, we're, we're sorry the... to the audio-only listeners, but sorry. Uh, this is... So but I yeah, guess we it's, could maybe it's, it's take really pictures, cool. and, we'll, and we'll have Bill put up we'll, we'll, your guys' We'll put pictures up on, uh, up on Instagram. I've already got some yeah. pictures of it. So. Okay. Um, so, if, so if you want to check it out, head to our Instagram at Cosmere Studies, so, and yes. you'll see some cool pictures of this stuff. Mm-hmm. And we'll tag her over there as well. Yes. Yeah, thank you very um, much, Frey. Uh huh. Now, speaking of goodies, y'all have your goodies, but guys, it's time for another giveaway. Thank you. To, thanks to our patrons. Um, mm-hmm. Of course, all of our patrons are open to everyone and free to enter. So for this giveaway, to celebrate having covered all the major works in the Cosmere, we have got double prizes for you. Double. Double prizes. We are, exactly. Jordan got it. So because we've covered the major Cosmere, we're giving away a decal. A gold decal of the Cosmere symbol, the one that got us into trouble. Very at the very much beginning. in trouble. <laughs> and then not in trouble, but I'd already made a 3D logo and we were not doing that again. Well, and it's thanks to the <laughs> it's thanks to this symbol that we're able to do these giveaways. So mm-hmm. actually kind of is. And then, so mm-hmm. and then also I don't know if that's backwards or not. I think it is. It is upside a, down. Yeah. So this is a lanyard. And it says the Cosmere has really cool designs on it. So basically the next con you go to that Brandon's signing at, you put your name badge on that and you wear it and you'll be his favorite attendee. <laughs> and then you'll disclaimer, be best friends. Disclaimer, we don't actually know whether you'll become his favorite attendee. <laughs> or best friend. But anyway, so yeah, we'll put up, put up a post in the next couple of days for, for how you can enter that giveaway. So keep an eye on our Facebook, Instagram, and or Twitter pages. And you can go ahead and try and enter that. Mm-hmm. Um, of course, special thanks to Brandon Sanderson's online store at store.brandonsanderson.com for sending us a bunch of awesome goodies that we can give away to you. I think these are pretty cool. Mm-hmm. So um, it is now time, everyone. We are branching out from simply discussing a single book book each episode, and we're actually going to dive into diverse topics. And we want to hear from you. Write in, ask us your questions, or what suggested topics you have for us to discuss during the show. Give us feedback about how you think we're doing or present your own theories and let us know what you think of what's going on in the Cosmere. You can send all questions and suggestions to Cosmere studies at gmail.com. You could even have your email read on air. So that's the time. Of course, outside of the podcast, we each have our own personal projects. I'll go ahead and start us off this time. When I'm not here, I do have a bunch of board game reviews over at the Innkeeper's Table at www.innkeeperstable.com. I post about games on social media as well, so go ahead and head over to those. Check out my social media accounts on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. All of those are at Innkeeper's Table. Amy, how about you? So I'm on Facebook at coincidence cosplay and props on twitter at coincidence cosp because my name is too long but that's not actually my name it's just coincidence cosp and then instagram at coincidence underscore cosplay um right now i've been doing uh the cosmere inktober challenge and i'm 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 caught up i think i did today's prompt yesterday so i just need to post it still and then actually one of them was i put up taldane like it was it was day and night was the prompt and so i drew the planet the, the tidally locked planet i like yeah it. so i was like hey that's an easy one to do um but yeah so i have i'm all i'm i think i'm caught up other than putting up today's which i will do tonight and then um it's only three more to go i think so maybe four i can't any i'm close i'm close anyway um cool. but otherwise i finally have acrylic pattern pieces for making all the other dice like a D4, a D6, a D10, a D8, a D12. Yes, all of those. So that's what I'm going to be working on as well as finishing up something for um, a Secret Santa prop thing. So I need to finish that. And I can't talk about what that is because in case somehow they find out that I'm on here. Anyway, so I can't talk about that yet, but I'll probably put up mini progress things on that too. Super Secret awesome. Santa. But Stop. yes, Super Secret Santa. Yes. So... Lots of little details on that that I'm cursing. So it's fun times. Yes. <laughs> nice. Jordan, how about you? Um, you, can always, you, got going? you can always find me at twitch.tv slash splicestream or on Twitter, splicestream. Um, I'm actually making a big announcement. I've made a big announcement over there. Um, come 2020, I will be 
quitting my full-time job and doing content creation full-time. I am what? absolutely terrified. Uh, but I, I have, look, the money's in the bank. <laughs> <laughs> There's always money in the banana stand, Bill. No, the, the banana stand. I am, I'm doing that. It is terrifying. I, I've got enough saved up to where if everything goes horrible, like I'll be, I'll like, I'll be fine for at least a year. Um, but if you are at all interested, uh, helping me out and you're interested in <laughs> Amiibo XCOM, I might start doing some Mario Kart stuff. I'm actually looking for, for various things to be doing. One of the things I'm going to be doing, which was the secret project I teased last time, I'm going to be doing XCOM Cosmere stuff, uh, for a Ooh. video where we use XCOM random name generator to throw in, uh, characters from the Cosmere into XCOM and seeing what the, that team does. And I, it's going to take a lot of setup and I need help with it. So if you're at all interested in helping me with that, please contact me over on uh, Twitter or Twitch. You can watch uh, Major Kelsier Blackthorn killing aliens. No, no. Well, it'll be... <laughs> we'll only do the last name so we don't get Kelsier okay. Blackthorn. So it'll be... It'll be you know, I think what was the joke I made last time? What, Kelsier... Dalinar felt and uh, Ardent Greg doing stuff. Ardent Greg. Ardent Greg. Yes. And be yes, understand, Ar Ardent Greg will be on the name list. I don't care <laughs> if he's not canon anymore. He is head canon. <laughs> yes. Oh man. Well, that's awesome. Uh, so yeah, check that. Definitely check that out because uh, we want Splice to succeed. We like mm -hmm. Splice. Yes. Baggins is in no way. Uh, biased here by the fact that I give him a monthly check. <laughs> Just as a reminder, Splice is Jordan. Baggins is me. But I go by Bill still. <laughs> anyway, um, for those of you who want to support the show but you can't necessarily become a patron just yet for any reason, we would love it if you would head over to Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen to podcasts and give us a review. Five-star review would be appreciated but whatever you, you honestly think we deserve. Um, it really will help us out, drive traffic, build the podcast, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And I want to add a yeah. challenge because we don't have a lot of uh, word actual reviews. If you're going to give a review, five-star review and five-word review on top of it. Ooh, review us minimum. in five words. No, no, no. Oh, exactly five super words. Duper exact. Awesome. <laughs> if you want to do more, I won't mind. But if you want to take Jordan's challenge, go ahead and do that too. Anyway... In addition to the live episodes of the show that stream on twitch.tv slash innkeepers table every two weeks on Monday nights at 7.30 p.m. Pacific time, 10.30 p.m. Eastern, our listeners can find our videos on YouTube, audio versions of the podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, pretty much anywhere else that you can find podcasts. Do a search for them by searching for Cosmere Studies. You can also follow us and contact us through Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook under the profiles at Cosmere Studies on all of those. Now for our next episode, we are moving beyond simply discussing each book. We're diving deeper into some Cosmere mysteries, speculating on future content, or even what-if scenarios, and even possibly doing some deeper analysis of Brandon's writing style. So join the conversation and even help shape it as we record our next episode on November 11th, 2019 at 7.30 p.m. Pacific Time at 10.30 p.m. Eastern on twitch.tv slash innkeeperstable. In the meantime, on behalf of Amy, Jordan, and myself, thanks for listening, and remember, there's, there's always, always another, another secret. secret. Ha, 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 ha.